Welcome to Critical Junction, episode 73. I'm Mark. I'm Luke. I'm Jill. And in 1978, the U.S. Army established a secret unit at Fort Meade, Maryland that, along with its sister and precursor projects, became known in 1991 as the Stargate Project, the purpose of which was to investigate the potential for psychic phenomena in military and domestic intelligence applications. Popularized in part by the 2009 film The Men Who Stare at Goats, starring Jedi Master Ewan McGregor and astronaut George Clooney, and more recently by the Netflix super hit Stranger Things, the project primarily involved experiments with remote viewing or the practice of seeking impressions about a distant or unseen target. This was supposedly accomplished using extrasensory perception or sensing with the mind, though such experiments have historically been criticized for lack of proper controls and repeatability. Similar to the MK Ultra project, the Stargate project can trace its origins back to the Cold War, when rumors of psychic research by the Soviet Union began to circulate in the West, prompting the US to respond by launching its own investigations into the possibility of using remote viewers as spies and intelligence agents. As the argument went, the primary benefit of employing quote-unquote psychic spies was their ability to operate at a distance and out of harm's way. While this does seem appealing, uh, the project ended in 1995 when scientists hired by the CIA concluded, after having carefully reviewed the results of the experiments, that it never produced any actual useful or successful information, and the success rate of remote viewers turned out to be no better than chance. In addition, they also determined the information gathered by psychics was neither valid nor useful, and it was, in essence, deemed to be an utter failure. As with any experiments and in research into the supernatural, the only useful information to come out of the Stargate project is that there is, despite all efforts to demonstrate the possibility thereof, no reason or evidence to conclude psychic abilities or remote viewing are in fact possible. And yet, even with the knowledge that psychics continue time and time again to fail under test conditions, or refuse to even have their so-called abilities tested at all, there are those who continue to believe in their effectiveness. Worse yet are the persistent conspiracy theories that there can neither be that can neither be confirmed nor validated that the CIA, being the ultra-secretive organization that it is, never actually shut Stargate down back in 1995, and are really continuing their experiments. Because, as everyone who has ever taken the red pill knows, that's just a front and a cover-up, and the real secrets are kept by a cabal of lizard people who control everything. So who is right? Do we trust the scientific method that clearly and repeatedly demonstrates psychic abilities are garbage? Or that guy on 4chan who likes to type in all caps and signs off with the truth is out there. Let's talk about that, shall we? You make it a clear either or. Yep. Like there's no in between. It's clear black and white. <laughs> Those are the only two options. Well, either Greg on 4chan is right or the scientific method is right. Can't have it both ways. Sorry, Greg. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> we, can, we can conclude that the scientific uh, method is, uh, is, is correct. But there can still be some openness for exploring, right? It doesn't have to be a no to the to the to the what is it? The, the channel guy, four <laughs> chan, the four chan guy, Greg, 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 Greg. on four chan, yeah, Greg yeah. on four chan. Well, Greg on four chan is wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, unless unless you can provide some kind of demonstration that you know it's actually the Stargate thing is actually still ongoing, there's no reason to conclude that it is. Right, right. I mean, then again, this uh, this uh, research by the CIA into extrasensory perception born out of the Cold War and stuff like that, I mean, it kind of is an extension of MKUltra, which was right. supposedly shut down in 73, and then five years later you see an extension of that kind of hmm. PSYOP and... Uh, and um, uh, uh, mind powers type of uh, type of research projects be being ongoing, you know. Right. Uh, so obviously they didn't shut it down then. Why would they have well, necessarily shut it down in ninety three? The the they they did have a couple of supposed successes that they keep pointing to the the, the advocates of it. Uh, right, the, um, like the two successes. But even yeah. those were discounted by the actual scientists that the CIA hired, and they're like, "No, this is this is bullshit." Okay, so what what are the two successes? I don't know if it's actually two or whatever, but there are a couple of what they like to refer to as successful remote right. viewing operations. Like they they got a couple of details right here and there. They're like, so ah, see? What, what, uh, one I heard about was that they found an airplane, a Russian, oh, Russian airplane, airplane that was yeah, down yeah. in northern Africa somewhere, and they used a remote viewer. To uh, to pinpoint the location of where that plane went down because apparently I, I guess there was some 
uh, intelligence sensitive uh, um, uh, like files or or, yeah. or or papers or something uh, on that on that flight, and so they wanted to to get back that uh, that uh, that in, that. Uh, intelligence material mm -hmm. um, and they use a remote viewer to find it or or, or give them uh, an area on a map that uh, that found the plane within within uh, within miles within right. a few miles or several miles well which is pretty good I would think no it's, yeah but it's no better than chance like if someone had just randomly pointed at a map and been like yeah it's probably in this area the, the the chances are equal to that guy having got it right. I mean, it depends on what kind of information they had beforehand. Like, that did too. they have a flight uh, a flight path? Yeah, how much uh, was this guy primed before they went and went ahead with the experiment? Like, 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 if they know that the plane is going from Libya to Moscow... Right. There's only a certain <laughs> window or corridor it, where it, it could have it landed. And never made it uh, <laughs> over the Mediterranean or something, then you can say, okay, then it probably went down yeah. here. Or, you know, and... Yeah. Like how, that how could much... be deduction. That doesn't necessarily need to be psychic. Psychic, <laughs> exactly. So yeah, how much information did they have prior to the experiment beginning? Like how much was he primed? Did, did they tell him? This seems to be often the problem with a lot of these kind of proofs of of, uh, of extrasensory per uh, uh, perception and, right. and uh, people like to ability. people like to look at the result and not the methodology that went mm -hmm. behind it. Like, if you look at the method and how they went about doing the experiment, you can point out all the flaws and just all the biases that were introduced from the outset in this kind of thing. Yeah. People are like, nope, look, he pointed at the general area where the plane may have possibly gone down. Mm -hmm. Got it right. Like, no. <laughs> so in the in those early days, like after, when did you say it, that it started up again? So, so MKUltra supposedly was shut down in 73, and then this is found to be started up in 79 or something? 70, uh, 78, 78, I think I said. And they, 78. they were... Late. 78. Well, it was shut down in 95. That's like, how late is that? Like, it's oh, pretty recent. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. super recent. Super recent. Yeah. <laughs> like, up until 90, 1995, they were still yeah, but, dicking around but with it, psychics. But it's, it's like, it's like you know they went, we're shutting it down just because I guess we have to at this point. Like, <laughs> otherwise, we're going to be looked at like we're a bunch of fools. Kind of thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I think the Stargate movie that came out in the late 80s was like some soft disclosure uh, think so? uh, because somehow, somehow, some information was leaked about what they were now calling the Stargate program, right. uh, and and so this was like to throw the public consciousness off and maybe let's make it as seem as extreme as possible. It's well, no, it, 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 just make it so that now, whenever you you try and do research on Stargate, you come up with all the movie stuff that right, was a right, big. Right like multi-million dollar big bu budget project uh, um, have you tried rewatching that movie lately Stargate? yeah because I remember when it came out I was like oh that's pretty cool yeah. but you yeah. rewatch it and it's pretty damn cheesy like it's, <laughs> it, yeah, it doesn't it, really it, hold up it, well. it starts off super strong and then it goes kind of lame yeah. Yeah. with the yeah and like the speed at which it went kind of lame was astonishing like it, yeah. it's like the they spend maybe half an hour with the cool shit, and then just... <laughs> well, yeah, as soon as, as, soon as you, you go beyond mystery and they start to really explain, you're like, oh, well, that's really fucking shitty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it doesn't... It doesn't like, really that begin... Up. Like, I always liked that the those kind of opening scenes in those kinds of movies where, like, some archaeologists find some shit and, uh, and that leads to, like, this yeah, yeah. ultra... Mm. Well, I find it's like... Fantastic with, It's like with these, uh, these superhero movies. Like, the setup can be really fun. But then once you actually you've descended into now the superhero is established, it's just really fucking boring and it's just a bunch of action bullshit. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So you it's think the Stargate noise? Yeah. <laughs> so you think the Stargate movie was released around the same time as the stuff is kind of like a coincidentally, like a right? Red like, herring kind of thing. I think maybe it was. It's it's yeah, <laughs> and because I mean it's true as much as it's conspiracy theory. It's true that. Um, Hollywood often goes and uh, and uh, uh, collaborates with uh, the U.S. military, right? Uh, right? The U.S. Defense Department, so that they can use big, like, military equipment in movies, even even to the point of using like aircraft carriers and warships. Right, and right, right. Famously, right. with Top Gun and stuff, right? Like that, that that was a huge collaboration between the the or the Last Ship, which is an awesome series, by the way. Check it out. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I remember you. Yeah, I see it. I see that one on Crave. Yeah. And I think of you because I remember you talking about it and enjoying it. Yeah. And no one else mm-hmm. on Earth has watched it but nope. you. So. <laughs> I'm the lone advocate for the last ship. So I, I, I'm just floating the idea out right. there. It just popped into my head just now. That Interesting maybe. conspiracy theory there. <laughs> well, right, right. Because but, other than those two things, where have you ever heard the term Stargate? Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. And it's kind of coincidental then that, that that term, Stargate, would just pop up within two years of each other. Right. When was the movie released? I don't know, somewhere around 1990 or something. Okay, yeah. Because, yeah, it was... The Stargate project was reorganized into Stargate in 1991. So if it happened around the same time when they were dropping all these kind of leaked bombshells about what was going on with the psychic experiments, then maybe, maybe you're onto something. Maybe. (laughs) Have you guys ever watched uh, those those shows like uh, Forensic Files or anything like that where they do end up relying on a psychic? (laughs) <laughs> and, and they do get results and they themselves are confused but they take it anyways and they go well it did solve the case so it it, it, it did on occasion happen on that on oh the, yeah on like that the show. it's not only on the show that it happens but like the police have often well i don't know about often but they've sometimes employed psychics well they do it shamefully like, like, yeah, like yeah. they don't like to admit it right yeah like <laughs> oh i guess we'll like i don't know we're drawing a blank here let's try a psychic kind right, of thing right. it's never actually worked out Oh, 94, actually, 94? when the movie Stargate came okay. out. Sorry. So by then, the term Stargate has been popularized and can be extracted from, from the real and made into a Hollywood movie. I mean, that's... It makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. They weren't that closely linked. So that me- that that means that actually the... Uh, the, the CIA Stargate program... That term had come out before then. Yeah. So maybe they got it from the movie. <laughs> nah. No. But they didn't get. But it. they didn't get from. No. no. So, but that, but that's what I'm saying. Maybe like, it, it still, it still could fit that the 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 information about Stargate comes out and then they have two years to make a movie <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. to kind of muddy the water so right, that people right. don't don't talk about. Which it seems to be a very popular thing in in the uh, UFO world. This this whole. Uh, uh, the the, uh, the soft disclosure, or right. or mm. or pointing people in in the extreme direction to, to make right. it seem like it's all myth and, and silly, kind right. of thing. You know? Yeah, like Independence Day kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about the like the particulars about the Stargate project. Like, this whole remote viewing, yeah, thing. I mean, that like that's a pretty easy experiment to debunk. Uh-huh. I mean. If you wanted to, if you wanted to really test a remote viewer and just totally fuck with them, right? Yeah. You tell them that you sent out a couple guys into, let's let's say, a warehouse or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, and then you ask them to give you details about the warehouse and about the people that you supposedly sent out there. When in reality, you've done nothing, right? Mm-hmm. You just don't send anybody anywhere. Tell the psychic that you did, and if they come up with all these details, you know they're full of shit easy experiment to do I, I guess I'm curious as to how one would go about proving let's say let's say I'm a psychic I'm claiming I'm a psychic okay I've made I've made uh, you know 10 inaccurate predictions <laughs> and then and then I make one that is bang on mm-hmm. uh, you know and and it was due to a vision that I had and that vision was bang on how would I go about proving that it's not just chance and you know what what if what if it is true how would I prove that? I don't know, but that like the 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 burden of proof is pretty large for that kind of thing, right? The amount of evidence that you need to provide to demonstrate that it's not just chance and you did have a, an actual vision, you know, it's pretty substantial when you think about it. Like, how do you prove that kind of thing? What kind of evidence would you need in order so, to demonstrate it? One of these guys, one of the scientists that were hired by the CIA to work on this Stargate stuff, um, or on this remote viewing stuff is this guy named Russell Tark. Um, and, uh, That's a good name. Yeah, so you and Muffler Crunch, you guys play at, at, at House of Targ all the time. Do you know where House of Targ comes from? Where it gets their name well, from? That, that's just a video game called it's, Targ. Oh, okay. There's a video game. There's a video Targ game. Targ is also Targ. a Klingon dog. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, with the little unicorn. Uh, yeah, that, the, those little unicorn dogs. Yeah, the little unicorn really? dogs. Yeah. Those are targs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that thing. 
But uh, so, for, so the House of Targ is House of the Video Game okay. Targ. Okay. So, okay. So. Uh, okay. But I mean, I don't know anything about the video game. Or anything like that, okay. Where that comes from. Cool. I was just curious whether uh, no relation. Maybe maybe the House of Targ guys are conspiracy theorists. <laughs> Um, but anyway, Russell Targ is uh, the name of the scientist guy, and uh, he put out an app on uh, that you can get on your iPhone uh, to test your ESP. No it's way. It's called the ESP Tester. Please tell me you've downloaded this. I've downloaded ah! it, <laughs> and i played it a little bit. The concept of it is that you're presented with, like, four color tiles. Okay. Oh, Simon Says. Simon Says. Kind of like Simon <laughs> Says. There's, there's red, blue, yellow, green. Um, and uh, what you have to do is when you're presented with the four color tiles you tap the one that you think has a picture behind it so it's one of those classic ESP tests yeah okay, yeah. and uh, and so uh, uh, you basically you basically have uh, 23 I think rounds in in each run of uh, of the test when you when you play on the app, um, so so 20, 23 times you're presented with the four tiles and you have to pick which one has the image behind it. So uh, a statistical average would say that you m- would probably get about one in four, right? Right. right? So six out of the twenty three, or twenty twenty three or twenty four, you would get you would get six right. Um, if you get seven, the app tells you uh, ESP. You're touching on uh, ESP. Right? ESP sensibilities <laughs> are present here, <laughs> but but this is like one off from the statistical average, and that's all it takes. And there would be uh, 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 what would you what do you call it a um, uh, a margin of error, right? Right. Uh, uh, yeah, so yeah. so if you're if you're one less, it does it does does it mean that. <laughs> You're not like super nuts. That you're, that you're sort of paranormally un ESP. <laughs> you're like and you're, you super act, ungifted. You actually even repel the, 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 <laughs> the power of statistical averages. <laughs> That's my power. <laughs> I fuck with the average. Uh, but apparently, if you keep playing the app, you can sort of you can sort of practice and develop your ESP and get and get a higher, higher, a higher and higher number of uh, of. Um, of, of you could practice your tiles. There you go. See, it so, might be something to hone and recognize yeah. within yourself, right? So and this is what you should, psychics you themselves try do. Out, claim. Try out this app. I'm, 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 I'm going to keep playing with the app, Ella. So I, I downloaded the app and I played, uh, I played a few, a, a few rounds. You have and, a psychic wife, don't you? Well, Ella, I, I, I go on. I get like, I get like the first three wrong, and then the fourth one, I finally get one right. Uh, her, she just grabs the phone and uh, and she goes. Right, she gets she gets the, she gets it right, and I'm like, that's so dumb, and I take the phone away from her. And, and, <laughs> Immediately and skeptical. She, that's she, so dumb. She, she, take, she takes it, it, That's dumb. She takes the phone back. <laughs> she takes the phone back and plays another round. She gets that one right too. <laughs> like, god damn it. <laughs> so you're the psychic repellent in that case. I'm the psychic you're repellent. The, yeah, yeah. You're below the curve. Well, maybe maybe you can only be ignorantly psychic. Like, you can only, if you're attempting to be psychic, it's not going right. to work for you. Yeah. <laughs> you're trying you're just too, hard. too hard. It's like try, It's like, it's like being cool. You can't be cool if you try to be cool. That's right. So the psychics are... Lord the, knows I've tried all my life. And <laughs> <laughs> so the psychics are the cool kids. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Okay. They're okay. ignorant. They, they have to be oblivious to right. their psychic <laughs> Can't try to be psychic. That's right. Kinda. Otherwise it fails immediately. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, you know, this harkens back to if you if you look at like uh, the legend of uh, King Arthur and who is this big magician guy? What Merlin? Merlin, yeah, Merlin. <laughs> uh, and I'm thinking of like the, the folklore of Merlin. It is something. He's to, remote viewing. He, it's something to be developed, and and the ego must be abandoned, and all that fun, you know, right. Zen type shit. Where you are know? you? Where are you getting? Merlin never said anything like that. Uh, yeah, I kind of. <laughs> Did you get that from one of the movies? I'm getting that from one of the movies. Okay, okay. all right. Is that in the the? the, the <laughs> rip- Meanwhile, you're thinking of the show, and you're like, no, 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 no that doesn't go. What? Sh- fuck the sh- no. Is that in is Excalibur, the best of I, the King Arthur movies? I guess that's what I'm thinking of. Is like Excalibur the Disney one? Kind of thing. No, Excalibur. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. The, yeah. God, that movie is so fucking good. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Does it still hold up? I haven't. Oh yeah, seen. yeah. Helen Mirren plays. Love uh, that movie. Oh yeah. Plays uh, the the. Is witch she naked there. though? She is naked Excellent. in that one. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Have you seen Caligula? 
No, uh, wait, is that with the Roddy McDowell or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Malcolm. Malcolm. Oh, Malcolm McDowell. Roddy is the (laughs) the wrestler. (laughs) Maybe he's psychic. Uh, well, ha- have have any of you ever had uh, a psychic experience of any of any sort? No, nothing. <laughs> Just no, no. Okay. Uh, my uh, my well, my grandfather that. tells this story about uh, when he him and my grandmother's relationship was uh, sort of budding when they were first starting to date. Uh, hit the, him and another couple. Uh, they were they were friends and um, they had decided to go out one day. My grandfather with his his buddy and my grandmother with her with her friend. Uh, uh, some the uh, so so the, the the guys and the girls split up and went and did their own thing for the day. Um, and apparently, my grandfather swears by my grandfather swears by this. Apparently. Uh, as uh, he was walking around in Montreal or something, uh, he decides, uh, like, like, like they're goofing off walking down the street, and he decides to grab the uh, grab a, a payphone and just dial up a random number and see where it gets. And he had dialed another payphone, and my grandmother was next to it and she's the one that picked up Whoa, and answered. Oh, that is cool. Well, that's a pretty damn good story. Right? That's pretty romantic. I mean, and I, I this is where I see the most evidence of it in, in, in stories in that people tell. It's that. usually yeah, romantic anecdotes of yeah. meeting and knowing right but away. But that's a pretty and, fantastical anecdote. That was pretty, that that's was pretty that's fantastic. That's pretty cool. Because <laughs> it involves two material things occurring simultaneously. Yeah. There. And he told, he's told that's me and, and the family that story with, with uh, my grandmother there, and she she wasn't uh, denying. She it. wasn't disputing it, or any, she wasn't uh, denying it. <laughs> <laughs> she yeah. was letting the story continue. But yeah. the question is ultimately, how do you rule out coincidence? Right, like it just in all likelihood, because psychic abilities are bullshit. It's just a really big, fucking cool, admittedly coincidence. I think I think at some point a coincidence is too big of a coincidence, though. But how, how? Yeah, how but, but see, this is my point. How do you completely rule it out? It can't be ruled out completely. It must be included. Because uh, we have is, a tendency with, with, with extreme logic to rule out. Well, that's the thing. Like, falsification. It, yeah, it's falsification. Like, if you're going to claim psychic phenomena for this type of event, you need to be able to demonstrate it, right? It's, you can't just say it's... It's a psychic thing. It can't be coincidence because how else could it? Could you right, explain right, right. this, right? Like you need to demonstrate that a psychic abilities are first possible, and then b, you need to demonstrate that it is in fact a psychic coincidence, a psychic event, and not a coincidence. Like, I guess what I'm what I'm pointing out is that it doesn't necessarily have to become a no. It's not psychic coincidence, but we can be remain open to it, of course, which yeah, is you, not something you can that remain we open to do. it. But you also need to be able to demonstrate it. Because if you can't demonstrate it, you're just making a claim, and you can't substantiate that claim. I understand, but how? 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 <laughs> how, how can we, you know, how can it be provable? How could we possibly prove it? Uh, if it's not something that's, like, it seems to be something that is partly chance, in the sense that um, it's equal to someone who's able to roll the dice repeatedly and guess the number mm-hmm. over and over and over again. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe there are special circumstances where that where that can happen. Sure, and like how you, do might we find be, these, you might find these these circumstances. You, well, for that how type of thing, you could, you could hook someone up to an, MR, an MRI machine or an fMRI and like notice patterns in the brain because they might be picking up on like they might be unconsciously picking up on a minor deviation in the way the dice are made, right? That, and they could be p- picking up on the patterns that are being revealed by the toss of the dice due to that kind of weight differential in the plastic or whatever, you know. There could be any number of different things going on that you're just not aware of that are influencing you to make these guesses correctly. And that's what you need to be able to demonstrate. That you, To claim psychic ability, you need to demonstrate that no, it wasn't any of those things that I just mentioned. It's not a pattern going on in the back of your mind. It's not just you feeling the weight differences unconsciously. You need to demonstrate that it is, it's psychic ability. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and to do that, you would need, need to, a lot of time. 
Well, not only time, you need to you need to come up with a test. Right. Right. Well, so this app, like if if you can get yourself to the point where you're regularly uh, picking which of the four tiles has the picture behind it, you're picking right. Yeah. Like fifty percent of the time. Would that be evidence of psychic ability? Not necessarily, because, because like you, if you, the what app, would it, what would account for you regularly being this able is to do that? Hold on, so the, the app itself might be on some kind of it might, the algorithm to rotate which image, which tile has the image behind it might have a pattern to it that your brain might be picking up on subconsciously, mm. right? And that's how you're able to eventually start getting mm -hmm. it right. Yeah, that's the problem with any digital based tech. Like it's way too easy for fuckery. Right. To yeah. Be is happening you really have to take a look under the hood and see how they made this thing and what yeah. the what the randomization sequence is like mm -hmm. because if it if there's any kind of repeatability in the randomization you might be picking up on it and that could lead you to making these correct guesses mm -hmm. yeah things could just be happening that you're not aware of uh, right? once again though it, it just points to the unprovability of, of and that's the problem how you can possibly the, the fact that but you... things that be but but scientific and physical principles that become useful to us and become reliable yeah. um, are, are just are testable and provable right like we end up we end up actually being able to test them and show them to be to be repeatable and right. and to be reliable yeah so yeah. if if this thing consistently fails that or or, or consistently uh, um falls short of being able to be tested uh, in a reliable way then which it has then yeah then then on what basis can we say that there's there's anything to suggest that it's real right just like how, if, how would we if you look at the jref for example they have a, a like a list a litany of different criteria that need to be met in order for a psychic thing to be considered valid you know that's why mm -hmm. none of these people who have ever gone to the million dollar challenge have won because they can't meet the criteria, right? Like this is, they consulted with actual scientists to develop a method to test psychic yeah. abilities and no one has ever passed it. So to say that it's possible, no, sorry, it isn't. Scientific method. Well, to have a we test can't... where all the variables are accounted for right. and isolated and what I'm getting at that is, is that repeatable. You can't, you can't make that claim that it's not possible. Just because it hasn't been done yet doesn't mean that it's not possible. Well, all the... you're, okay. you're shutting down right away going, no. I'll rephrase and it. I'm, I, and I'm continuously saying no. Let, we have I'll, to remain open. Okay, so. so I'll rephrase. I'll say that all the evidence that we have so far tends to indicate that no, it isn't possible. I'm, but I am still open... To be presented with evidence that would suggest that it is. I understand that you're claiming you're open, but, I, but are you truly open? Is something that how would we test that? What if I'm truly open? <laughs> yeah. How hook, would we test that? Hook my brain up to a machine and see where my, my <laughs> like, see how it lights up. See yeah. where my truthful nodes are and see if they light up when I'm telling you that. <laughs> but like, I'm yeah. That's what being open minded is. Being open minded doesn't mean just accepting this like any um, any claim without sufficient reason for it being open-minded means that you're open to changing your mind based on the available evidence which i am mm -hmm. like if i'm if i'm given the evidence to suggest that psychics are actually real and all these tests that we've devised so far are kind of flawed in some way which i don't know if they are i don't think they are then yeah i'll reconsider well, well who is it that said uh, be careful not to be so open-minded that your the brain, brain falls, falls out, out. Yeah. yeah who said that richard dawkins may have repeated uh, okay. it at some point but yeah I don't know who actually came up with it someone smart said it yeah some like guy it. with a brain <laughs> <laughs> well that hasn't this out app yet. for example yeah and this ability to predict it mm -hmm. uh, I mean it's it's digital technology I don't know how this app functions I don't know what the algorithms are but I mean really do you think that we're really honing honing this ability with this app it, it, that we would be able mm. to improve and, and predict the app's capability so I to guess be random. The con well, the concept of the app is that you you shouldn't be able to to learn the skill or, or any kind of skill because right. it's just randomized it random. where the image ends up uh, being uh, like linkable. Mm. In which of the four tiles it's a, is is the link to the image, right, or whatever, and it, and. And there's there's no feedback in the when when you when you when you're presented with four tiles, there's there's no feedback to say uh, to say like which tile it could be or it should be right. But, 
Um, yeah. Yeah. So, what was the question? Well, my my question was, uh, I don't know if I had a question, but uh-huh. what I'm, what I'm getting to is that uh, let's 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 just say that this app, yeah, uh, is or can lead to evidence of it being possibly ESP. Okay. By by honing it, you continue to every week do it and see do if it, you get better, and you see your averages get better. Right. Right. Yeah. That could suggest that ESP is being developed. Or, like I said before, you might be picking up on some kind of pattern within the randomization algorithm. Sub- you might be well, subconsciously picking up on a pattern. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, someone that is claiming to be psychic is claiming they're picking up on patterns in their mind and stuff like that. No, right? they're, they're claiming abilities that go beyond nature, right? They have a special ability that lets them go against divine no things. nature. It's not necessarily going against nature. What do you mean by Something him? that's that's funny is that this Russell Targ guy, I think, in a, a TED talk that uh, that I saw him in, he was talking about having been a magician when he was younger, mm. and uh, and how uh, he was doing like mentalism and uh, and stuff like the like like mind reading trickery. Mm. Uh, but at the time, he was just doing trickery. But he says that <coughs> that sometimes he would pick up on some kind of intuition uh, about some other details that he wasn't just that he ju- wasn't just uh, just uh, 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 speculating about based on his conscious techniques that he was applying right 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 in a sense recognizing a pattern without understanding maybe yeah yeah, yeah. so he he's claiming that that uh, that this kind of thing it happens with with a lot of mentalists and that like Kreskin and stuff have, have apparently uh, uh, copped to this kind of phenomenon, and um, he's he's claiming that uh, yeah that this that this is a sign of of ESP and not and not a sign of uh, uh, of uh, sort of subconscious skills being being kind of tapped into and and and, and developed as he's applying these other explicit conscious techniques. Right. right. Right? See, and I don't know how he parses those two possibilities. Well, see, the, we know that there, the people can develop abilities subconsciously to pick up on patterns or read, yeah. you know, like unspoken body language and shit. Well, we know we know that exists. We don't know psychic abilities exist. That's the difference, right? Like, what's what what are the odds of someone picking up a random detail? Doing so based on subconscious information versus the odds of them having psychic abilities, right? Mm-hmm. The odds are more likely that they are just picking up on shit subconsciously because we know that to be a thing. We know that to be something occurring within the universe, right? Like you can demonstrate that by, again, the fMRI experiments and whatever else to see which patterns light up in the brain. Mm-hmm. You cannot test for psychic abilities like that. So you can't make the claim that I'm psychic. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I, I read. But, a, I read but it's still maybe so, possible, is what I'm getting at. I, how, in order to say it's possible, you need Wait, to demonstrate that. Isn't that what no. the whole JREF thing is? Is sorry, yes, yeah, is based on is is the fact that, or or is, at, at least they're going on the premise that you can test. Yeah, for. I misspoke there, so okay. I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> I tested for. I did a psychic test with a bunch of people at one point. Like okay. I, we did a double blind experiment where. We hid a ring or some object under one of four cups. Right. Right. And the person who was going to divine where this thing was left the room. The tester left the room, and some rando placed the thing under one of the cups. Both people yeah. came back, and they would, you know, take a couple of different shots of where this thing was located. We tested like 10, 12 people. Mm-hmm. And some people were getting strings of like two or three hits. Others were just failing miserably, right? So if you average everything out per mm-hmm. person, it just came up to chance. Right. Like, yeah, it was, it was a fun experiment. Like, some people, like, when they started getting on a roll and getting, like, repeated hits, they're yeah. like, wow, this is kind of interesting. Maybe there's... Let's and then go they to the fail. casino. Yeah. <laughs> let's go play some craps. Yeah, let's play some craps. Roll the dice. I don't know. It was an interesting experiment to do. But you were talking about mentalism and... Uh, one of the coolest things that I did, because I used to do like stage magic too, right? Because I, I figured I want to know how this shit is done, so I read up on it, and I did a um, 
they call it a drawing duplication, where you bring up two people on stage and have them... Oh, yeah. You have them kind of... One is the projector, the other is the receiver, and they both right. end up creating the same image. Yeah. And it, it worked. It just... It, I, I blew everyone's mind, but the method behind it is just subtle and ingenious, because you're what essentially you're doing is you're giving both people the same set of instructions to draw the same image without either of them knowing it. And at the end, they have the same image blows the crowd away. They're like, oh, fuck. It's really cool. I guess what I'm getting at is with the experienced mentalist, for example, yeah. that you were talking about, they themselves claim that at some point there are elements that go into intuition, something that yeah. they're not quite able to grasp what patterns they're picking up on, but they mm -hmm. are picking up on patterns. Now, what I'm saying is that uh, these psychic abilities, for example, maybe something that are real but how do you pick up on the patterns and prove the patterns well then why call it why call it psychic ability like we know that you're able to pick up on patterns just why don't we just leave it at that it doesn't have to be psychic right it well, could sure. just be a subconscious I, by thing. calling it psychic we're saying it's supernatural right and, and immediately yeah. we're going the, and yeah. the supernatural is not real right, so right. that's not real then but yeah. But that's not what this is. Maybe here what we're talking about is unrecognized patterns. And I'm fine with that. Like, if it's right. just stuff happening in the or, brain... But that's, that's just throwing a name at it kind of thing, right? Uh, well, so let's not call it psychic, then. Let's, then fine, because if you once you start calling it psychic, then it brings in this connotation that it's supernatural. Well, sure. And it's, you know, it's, like, it's like we jump over the wall and now everything's not real anymore. Uh, yeah. Kind of so <laughs> let's stay on this side of the wall here, and, and let's yeah. not call it psychic, then. Yeah. If you want to make this the claim, like that, cultivation of the subconscious faculties of the mind. Right. Well, and, and this, and is... I'm perfectly fine with that because that's a thing that exists in the universe. Mm -hmm. You can you can point to it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. Like, like you're never going to get good at 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 at, uh, at baseball or, or golf by thinking about. <laughs> You know, well, so every every not... inch of your swing into the. But that supposedly ball. is not true, though. Supposedly. And this has been uh, tested that if you think about exercising, yeah, it does actually lead to physical. Oh no! Benefits. Yeah, you're talking about like visualization and stuff like well, that. Sure. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're you're like you're like priming your mind. I'm talking about like uh, like actually perform <laughs> when you're performing the action of you know you're 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 back swinging that club and you're coming down and you're thwacking that ball. You're not thinking at every inch of that, of that arc. You know, you're not thinking, okay, now I'm going to move another inch. Now I'm going to move another inch. Now I'm going to, am I at the right angle here? Okay, now I'll move another inch. Okay, let's maintain that angle. Uh, <laughs> Unless you know, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not conscious at every step of the way. At some point, these a lot of these types of, of uh, of, of skills and abilities, you you have to kind of let go of an intellectual way right. of of approaching it and you have to kind of sub submit to your 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 intuitional kind of abilities. right right mm -hmm. it, like driving like learning to drive like versus driving yeah, yeah versus already knowing example. how to drive right uh, it, eventually you're it doesn't seem like you're thinking about it. Yeah. It no. is naturally occurring. The car kind of becomes like an extension of your body. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, there's so many examples of stuff you just do every day that you're not consciously aware of doing. You know, yeah. the whole zoning out in the middle of like going into autopilot and just doing the thing that you do, right? Yeah. yeah. In that sense, I guess we're saying that thought is slower. Like a conscious thought is slower than unconscious than thought. Subconscious yeah. thought. Yeah. I, I'm never sure how to how to. Uh, what what people mean by the difference between subconscious and unconscious? I don't exactly. Know. Unconscious means asleep. Subconscious means below the, the surface. Below the, the surface, not the understood. thought processes, the neurons firing that happens without you realizing it, without yeah, you being accounting for it and analyzing them consciously and being able to like verbalize what's going on. Right. In terms of proving this thing that we don't, that I don't want to call psychic because then it becomes supernatural, but. It, uh, the recognizing of patterns mm. is still something uh, that I that I throw at you, Mark. How would we prove it? And my example there is we would we would play this app here of mm -hmm. Jill's, but but do it continuously and see if anything is is being honed right. over time. And it would take a large amount of time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Then like there there are ways. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a neuroscientist by any stretch of the imagination. Well, gonna, so I'm I'm I can't come I can't come up with a method, but. 
There but are you ways. There are. I'm, I can't. But well, sure you can. No, I can Like I don't know the details necessary to hook someone up to an fMRI and which patterns to look for and which parts of the brain. But that thing, that kind of thing, can be done. You, like it would take an actual neuroscientist to be like, you need to focus on the parietal lobe or whatever, and just analyze the differences in neurons firing while you're playing this app over time. Like you said, you know, it would take a lot of time to see what parts of the brain are being activated when you're doing this thing and which parts of the brain are responding when, to it. But You're also talking about tracing it to this or that. I'm just talking about actual results here. So, so am I. The, like the, the results would be able to be sussed out from analyzing the brain patterns and all this fun stuff because at the end of the day, that's where everything is happening, right? It's all happening in the brain, either subconsciously or otherwise. Mm -hmm. So that's where you need to go to figure out what's actually occurring. Make sense? Well, I don't know if that's where you have to, to go else to find go? out where it's actually occurring. What else would you do? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just talking about the actual results of, 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 of guessing properly or right. not guessing properly. Well, so am I. Like, what I'm interested in is the why of the result. Like, why is it that you're you're failing miserably at, at picking an image on this app or conversely why are you getting them right consistently something's happening in the brain right and that's what i that's what i would be interested in finding right. out yeah. i mean you could you could get get some answers from analyzing the brain but you could also get some answers from analyzing the actual test itself For sure. and 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 through an analysis discovering whether or not there's a pattern you that can, actually is emerging that the brain is picking up on yeah, subconsciously. And those two things can be combined into a more reliable test, right? Take a look at the brain activity, take a look at how the app is designed, and if there's any repeatability in the randomization process. Combine those two things and look at the results and start picking it apart. And, and so I, I, I guess what I'm getting at here is that... Uh, the science involved in proving something like this is very involved, very extensive, very time-consuming, mm -hmm. and no one's really putting money at that. It, 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 you know. Well, I mean, we we we've, we've looked at this this thing that the government did and probably did very poorly because they were all behind because they're, they're behind their their one-way mirror, two-way mirror. Their, yeah. What are they right. called? They're they're uh, drinking with prostitutes. Right. And, and you know. I think they call it a two-way mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Two-way mirror. Because a they're not scientists and b they're not you know they're interested in finding out if this thing can be applied to military endeavors. Not right. They're not looking. How for can this. we use this for bad if it is real? Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they're not looking at well. Isn't it interesting how the parietal lobe? I don't even know if that's where this shit is happening. I just like the, the name parietal lobe. <laughs> but like they're not interested in that. They just want to know. Is it real, and can we shoot someone with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they want to skip steps and, yeah. and get to its function. Yeah, let's just get to, let's get to the it. result and how we can blow up that building remotely, you know, yeah. using ESP. Well, I'm, st I'm still curious, Jill, uh, right. uh, about this app here and whether or not uh, the ability to predict can be... Honed. Unconsciously honed, yeah. It would be unconscious. We wouldn't mm -hmm. understand while it's happening, would right. we? Right. You know, we're not no. plugging our brain in to see what's lighting up and then and then therefore lighting that thing up to see if we get better results and stuff mm -hmm. like that, which would be something that we could mm -hmm. do. Yeah. Let's say we, we hook our brains up, we see what lights up. Cool. Let's figure out how to light that part up so that we can then see if it leads to better prediction sure. abilities and stuff like that. Yeah. Honing intuition is something that can, like, it's a thing that can be done, right? Just intuition is only, it's merely subconscious stuff that, you, that you're picking up on. Yeah. That's all intuition is. It's not some kind of otherworldly insight into the... Like, it's just... It's stuff in the brain. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, what I'm getting at here is that uh, I think here we are we are men of science, right? Uh, cheerleader for science. Uh, I mean, the three of us, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, uh, I'm not saying I believe in, in the supernatural. I, I'm saying there are things that, that we don't understand. Sure. Okay. Uh, there will always be things that we don't understand in, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I mean... It immediately Mark's like I don't know about that well, maybe eventually we'll know no, I'm, I'm, no I'm just I'm thinking about it I'm like isn't there stuff that yeah probably I think you're probably right I mean it's well, a, I there's stuff we don't understand yeah well, yeah I mean they're all I'm just, just, it's right the, now there's plenty of things there's we plenty don't of stuff understand. we don't get like a lot. Like a lot. Like, like a lot of lot. Like lot. most things. <laughs> like most things. I <laughs> like I don't understand how a car engine works. <laughs> right. Well yeah. I like, don't understand how wireless internet works. How yeah. how T V how images fly through the air. And end up on T V. And end up on T V. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I don't understand. That. Well, and I, I think that's a good example of the world. Uh, we're looking out at the world now and what people are saying, and no one knows anything, it seems. <laughs> like, we're really ignorant. Uh, and, a and, lot and, of stuff uh, happens on, on kind of intuition or... Uh, Sort of a sort of a blind faith in in like every, every, everybody's doing their little part in the machine, mm. and there's like sort of a blind faith that ultimately all this stuff comes together to produce like a common right. product, a right? common experience, or whatever. Like you just go about life expecting the world to work the way it does, yeah, without really thinking about it, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff we don't understand. I don't understand. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so apparently they had uh, Yuri Geller in uh, some of their experiments. Oh my god. <laughs> who's, who's Yuri Geller? Oh, have we talked about him before? Oh, probably. Yeah. That's not as if I remember this what we were the, talking the, about like two minutes ago. Sucking Spoonbender guy. Spoonbender guy from the 70s. Oh, okay. And then they, like, he, he was on Johnny Carson at one point, and he, like, he, they switched his props without him giving them the okay to do it, and he's just, he's sitting there trying to bend the spoon with his mind and just not getting anywhere with it. And Carson's like, okay, can we, can you, are you going to do it? <laughs> it's like, I'm, there's something about the studio that's interfering with my powers yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. <laughs> like, oh, okay, it's the, sure. Where's my props it's the, it's the, like, age-old excuse of, Oh no, as soon as you try and test my abilities, yep. it's not going to work. It's not going to work. No, because no, your because negative energy is influencing me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or the the magnetosphere of the lights in the yeah. studio well, is fucking with my so, brain pattern. So let's so let's let's pretend that I understand psychic abilities and that I thought we weren't going to call it that anymore. Uh, well, sure. <laughs> Let, let's call it netting. Netting. Like Ned, I'm now going to ned. Who's Ned? <laughs> it's, 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 it's the ability to be psychic. I'm, I'm going to Ned. Okay. Right. So I'm just calling it that so we don't have the association of All supernaturalness. Right. And so what I'm claiming it is, is tapping, tapping I'm gonna into... I'm going to Ned. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to Ned. I'm going to Ned right now, and I'm tapping into the, t- into the unconscious, which is like the dream world. Okay. Where where I dream, and we all know how Luke fragile. Luke has his eyes closed. <laughs> we, all, we all know how fragile the dream is. He's looking very you wake up, and as speaks. soon as as soon as conscious thoughts come in, your dreams are gone, and it's hard to remember. It's a it's a very fragile thing. It's, where it's are a you very going with this? Thin shelled egg thing. Well, I'm just saying it's a very fragile thing. This is what I'm getting at. So so of course it seems like a cop out for me to go. Something's messing with my mojo here, kind of thing. You know what yeah. I mean? But it really is a fragile thing. I mean, we're not very good at it. You know, I'm not claiming this guy is real. I'm just oh, saying, I see what you're saying. I'm, I'm just saying, you're saying it, his, it his would be a very, very has... fragile thing. To tap into it is very, very so fragile. you're saying there's something... There's, there's something excuse. compelling in the argument, uh, uh, whether or not it's sound. Nah! <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I'm also pointing out how quickly, Mark, you jump to just going, nah! <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm constantly saying, like, you just always have to be open to it. Yes, of course, we can, we can say this guy's a fraud and stuff like that. That, but what what if some fraud's just having a hard I'm sorry, what if some guy that's not a fraud is just having a hard time tapping in? You yeah, know? okay. What I'm, if some fraud is just having a hard time <laughs> tapping in? <laughs> I'm open to the to it being possible as long as you can demonstrate I, that possibility. And to me what I'm saying is I'm I'm saying you're you're claiming to be open and you're not necessarily Fine. open. Don't believe me. <laughs> I am not open. Do you saying that you're open? <laughs> no, I'm open to it. Just give, present the evidence to say that it's possible. You're open to 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 evidence. Yes, uh, because that's really the only. So for the thing to be useful, it has to be something that's applicable in 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 uh, in circumstances that you, the supposed person with abilities, uh, um, uh, don't necessarily have control over. Mm. Right. So it has to be usable in non-ideal conditions so if it's only demonstrable and usable in conditions where you get to pick the fucked up spoon that you know uh, uh, has a jelly handle or <laughs> where you get to run up to the phone book to make the the air push the page over uh, uh, rather than just sitting there and concentrating and hoping that the page turns um, you know 
these these kinds of things. If you if 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 you are are then presented with a situation where you didn't get to set up the circumstances in a way that you know you can you can win because you've tested it before, uh, uh, then that like that is compelling evidence to invalidate the 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 the, the reality of the supernaturalness of this whole thing, right? right. So so the fact that that Johnny Carson gave the guy a real fucking spoon and said no 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 well let let like toss that guy's fucking prop spoon in the garbage and let's have him do it on a real spoon. Like that shouldn't have affected it, but it obviously did. Right. right. And because it wasn't just the energy of the well, thing on, because we... this guy does it in front of crowds all the time with with the same kind of uh, of, of skepticism in the cr- in the crowd except that the producers hadn't thought of of uh, of of replacing the spoon, the prop spoon with a real one without that guest, uh, that guest psychic knowing about it. Right. You know, it should be, it should be doable under any circumstance. And yet, like you said, the moment you switch his prop out, it fails, which tends to indicate that something fishy is going on. Yeah. Right. If it wasn't fishy, you should be able to repeat the ability no matter when, where, or no matter whose spoon. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I guess. Um, I know I can do the spoon bend thing. Have you have you ever met uh, someone claiming that they're truly psychic? Well, we went to that psychic fair a little while ago. We yeah, surrounded by well, people. and <laughs> and immediately we're just going fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like like pretty immediately. Like it, it felt kind of lonely because literally everyone there, even the people who seemed at first skeptical and uh, and educated and, and, and reasonable uh, every single pe- one of the people we talked to kind of ended up on the yeah I'm a believer kind of side right. you know? but they were already believers well yeah that's why they showed up there yeah. There were just no other podcasters, skeptical <laughs> podcasters. Right, 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 right. right. The thing. Like, <laughs> it was I, all I, people I who were like... actually there yeah, because we, they we, enjoy psychic fairs because they we, believe in we that. We kind of cornered this, the skeptic well, podcaster market in that way. <laughs> I feel like, like in I, Ottawa, I'm not convinced there's. I, I went in there trying to be open minded, but I mean, right away the woman's talking about like tree angels and shit like that. So it's just, it's too far. You went too far, you know? <laughs> <laughs> tree <laughs> angels? I don't remember this. <laughs> That woman, no? Oh, wait, at the, at at the, the first... Uh... Skeptic... Uh, no, Skepticon is the complete opposite of what we went to. Um, uh, Paracon. Paracon, yeah. Paracon right. That's yeah, what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm talking about. She's talking about tree angels. Like, we had right. nothing. Yeah. It was nothing. <laughs> so yeah. immediately we just went, okay, well, how about this guy talking about UFOs that doesn't believe in UFOs? <laughs> that sounds good to us. Let's go talk to that guy. Yeah. Ah, fuck. Now he's talking her ear off. Fair, fair. The only reason I, why we talked to him, too, is because he validated... Uh, uh, our position, our our skepticism when he when he asked yeah. uh, when he asked uh, about the Tic Tac uh, uh, UFO stuff, he's like uh, he's like why haven't uh, why haven't we heard uh, more about this or seen more uh, uh, or seen any proof about it or, or, right. or something? And, and then, and then, and then he and then Mark bullshit? raises his hand and he goes because it's bullshit. <laughs> hey, he goes, hey, it's like, and we're all best friends right, right away. <laughs> yeah. It's all bullshit hey, yeah. because it's. Bullshit! Was, yeah, <laughs> and that that, that, that was uh, Chris, right? That was Chris. Chris Zuger. Shout out to yeah. Chris. Shout out to Chris. Yeah. That so was funny. yeah, the only reason why we stuck with that guy was because he he confirmed our biases. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like it's like everybody, including the 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 skeptical testers of this stuff, have their own biases. Whether whether you're a believer or a non-believer, right. and, and the point of the scientific method is to get around is those to, biases. Is, yeah, explicitly to try uh, uh, and subvert the, the biases. Right. right, and just do it objectively, so you can actually test for this shit. Mm-hmm. So let me ask Mark: If you were to wake up tomorrow, and you wake up knowing something that's about to occur, you therefore have. How do I know that? For yourself. How, how do I know? Oh, this? have you ever had like a predictive dream? You asked that of us, or yeah, or, yeah, 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 some kind of I psychic told, experience. I told yes. you my pope dream. Your pope dream. My psychic pope dream. Well, yeah, there's a good one. Yeah, but okay. Wait, what was that one again? It was. Give him your pope dream. <laughs> the Lay pope it on him. Let's, pope hear, let's hear it again. <laughs> so it was like during conclave when Pope Benedict was first elected. Right. Uh, the night before it happened, I had this dream that the new pope would be German and he'd be 78 years old. Which Pope Benedict at the time was, or Ratzinger, before yeah. it became so Benedict. Yeah, you got some very specific details. It's very specific. I like 
it was the night before con- before they announced. Why the new would book. you even care I enough to? I, I don't know to I've, be thinking about that. I don't know. In, I don't know. It, it was all you're over not the new. Catholic, no, well, I. I mean, you're culturally yeah, Catholic? culturally okay. Catholic, but, it, you know, it was all over the news, it was all over the radio, whatever, so I, the night before they made the announcement, right. I had this very specific dream that they were going to announce the 78-year-old German as the next pontiff. So I, go to, I talk to my dad, I'm like, hey, I had this really cool dream, explain the details to him. As I'm doing that, as I'm explaining the dream to him, the bells are going off in St. Peter's and the smoke is going up in the, in the thing, and they, they make the announcement on the radio that they just picked the new pope. Cardinal Ratzinger, 78 from Germany. I'm like, mind blown. Right. That was my, that's my Pope dream. I predicted the coming mm-hmm. of the next Pope. Right, right. But I can account for that by saying that he was one of the preferiti. He was preferred. Right. To, he was going he was to be. He was in the running and, there and, were, and, yeah. and the media and were talking heard, about who would be. You had heard this information, whether or not you acknowledged you probably, receiving this information. Yeah, I probably heard about that somewhere. Right, yeah. he was front runner to become the next pope. It's just the timing of it is what made it really cool. Right, right. That that you happen to have that particular dream so this, on the night before yeah. the, the 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 new pope right. actually. Happened. It's just the timing that was really interesting. Like ah, oh. this reminds me of um, the Exorcist book. The, the okay, so William Peter Blatty. Yeah, is that the guy's name? So uh, while is that, is that right? I'm not sure. William Friedkin was the director. While they're while they're looking, at, yeah, I think you're right on the names. The Blady Blady. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not okay. exactly sure how to pronounce his name. Okay, anyway, I can read words. I don't know. How to, <laughs> but, I can uh, read words. <laughs> uh, so in the book, uh, they find uh, a book in in the household where this kid is that mentions uh, the idea of being possessed, mm-hmm. and so therefore. They can conclude that it's possible that this girl right. read this book, therefore developed the idea in her mm. mind, and then therefore is exhibiting these these possession, uh, this possession phenomenon because possibly she read this, that she sure. saw this in the book. Right. Sort of yeah. thing. Uh, so once again, there's no way to prove anything. Yada 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 yada. Yad. But this is the closest you've ever gotten to to feeling that possibly you've had some sort of a psychic experience. Kind I, of thing. I don't even like. I don't even know if I felt that. It was more like, wow, that was interesting. Okay. On the spot when it actually happened, like I was blown away by how, how cool it was. First of all, yeah, because yeah. the timing was just awesome. Like it happened. Like they made the announcement as I was telling the story to my dad, which is right, just, right, right. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. I was like, how did you know? Uh, I'm psychic. I think <laughs> was my response, ironically. Yeah. But yeah, that's the closest I've come to a quote unquote psychic occurrence or whatever. What about you, Luke? Well, I'll mention just the, 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 the one that's clearest in my mind because it was, it was the first one. Uh, and, and it was uh, so perfectly emulated in a dream versus the reality uh, that I then afterwards experienced. And it wasn't about anything uh, provable or, or uh, even interesting. Like it really was just some, some, some snow rolling across the highway I, I saw the vision of it in a dream before I saw it in reality. So, so, oh. so you had a deja vu. I had a deja vu, but a very clear deja vu. Hmm. Uh, and so, therefore, in in my mind, that so wait, seemed psychic. It was a visual. It was. Ex- You're ex- sure that 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 the image How of this? No, sure? no, no. <laughs> But 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 in your mind, you're sure that the 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 image of the snow going over the highway was in a dream per se, and not just a feeling when you actually did see the snow going over the highway. That this it was triggering that kind of memory feeling. Hmm. Well, I remember I remember the dream. because most déjà vu's I I don't mistake them for being things that I dreamt about earlier. I just I I just in the moment have that feeling right. like whatever endorphins it is that, that that are released when I'm remembering something just happen to misfire when I'm experiencing something for the first time and it feels like I'm, I'm remembering so, it as it's happening. Right. So I would say that it felt very similar to a, to a deja vu, that, that sort of misfiring in the brain sort of thing. But it was also, uh, I was able to relate it back to the dream. You, because you did dream, remember having I a, did remember a dream the dream before. The dream felt different. 
Okay. And I didn't really understand at that time why that would seem so important that the snow blow uh-huh. across. Like, what the fuck? Why am I? Why is this so clear in my mind? Sort of thing. Until later on, when I see it, and I go, "What the fuck? Huh. I, I've already seen this." Right. Sort of thing. So that was my first experience, and so in my mind, it's the clearest, and it's the one that I like to use it as an example. But also, I like, I like to use it as an example. It yeah, it's, it's very simple. Minimalist as a, an experience. <laughs> and and I'm gonna say that I've had experiences where I meet people in my dreams before I meet them in real life, that type of thing. Right. But I mean, there's no way to really prove that, you know. Yeah. And especially when it's it's usually for some reason hair, like I'm remembering the person's right, hair or the, really, the shape of their head. Right. But really, humans all uh, all kind of at least in 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 the culture in which we're immersed. Humans kind of fit like one of twelve profiles, kind of thing, right? right, right. Like almost everybody fits right. into there's, one of twelve there's no types way, or right. something like this. There's no I mean, way. Twelve is just a number I'm coming off. Uh, the Cylon. With there's no way I can. Yeah, the, like Cylon. One of twelve Cylon models. <laughs> there is no way I can prove it to you or even myself. I, right. I really don't think about it all that much. Mm-hmm. I just try to take try to take note uh, okay. of of when sure. I have some sort of dream experience and it feels different. I think, oh, maybe this will mean something. Yeah. Usually, it it. it the, the only the only things that seem to be psychic within myself are very useless. Right. <laughs> like, like it's not as if, of a it's, snowdrift. Yeah, it's not as if I'm predicting like uh, you know something useful like six forty nine numbers. Was there right, anything like interesting <laughs> happening when you actually saw the stri- the Absolutely snowdrift? Absolutely nothing. Or did anything interesting happen no. soon after? Or, no. Or so no. it was just the snow blowing. It's just the it's snow blowing really across. It's really just about snow yeah, blowing yeah. over. That's why I find it the most interesting. Because it, <laughs> yeah. it was such, so clearly an emulation of it. You, you know, know what? I, like, really I want to see, I wanna see a, a, a series of comic books centered around a guy with really useless psychic abilities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And wasn't I would the, believe Wasn't that this a, a, a famous uh, uh, a recurring sketch on Saturday Night Live? Where um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Christopher Walken was spoofing on his um, on his uh, dead zone thing. His dead zone thing, where he would like shake hands with somebody oh, and he goes, yeah. "You're gonna go to a restaurant later. You're gonna order a coffee, <laughs> and there won't be enough milk in the little bowl next to you." And that's it. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> like like it's all mundane shit like that. Yeah, that yeah, he's yeah, predicting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, th- that. these are my these are my psychic experiences. Right. Anyways, really mundane, <laughs> boring shit that I can do nothing to, nothing with, but that make me go, oh, yeah. yeah. And that's it. Things that's all that I got. Make you go. Hmm. <laughs> it ain't predicting no pope. I'll give you that. Yeah, that's right. That that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hmm. That one's casino worthy right there. You know? <laughs> no, if I if, if, if I could do it again on command, that'd be awesome. I could just predict popes for the rest of my life. I think that's just win some lottery. You're looking at like <laughs> once every thirty years. You this is my time. <laughs> it's my time to shine. <laughs> You're like fucking Pennywise. His name's gonna be Paul. <laughs> every twenty-seven years, I return to predict a new pope. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, I think we, I think we've. Kind of okay. run the gamut there. Any final thoughts on the Stargate project or psychics in general? Well, uh, my I, I liked the idea of how would one go about proving it. And I just mm-hmm. told you. Yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> and it's and it's very uh, long and, and time consuming, yeah. and no one's ever going to do it. <laughs> it's basically what it's going to come around to. See, I that's would, not necessarily. If I were a, a neuroscientist, my focus would be exclusively on this kind of shit. I would I would well, be the guy investigating psychic phenomena from the, a scientific perspective. The truth of the matter is, your focus would be on whatever you're receiving money for your focus to be on. Well, no, like you <laughs> you would you pitch this shit to get grant money for it. And yeah, and then the you don't get it because no. they all just call you crazy and Not go, no, you're gonna. Yeah, you're like <laughs> if you if you craft a decent research proposal, sure. you could what. No, uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> Jill just moved slightly, and we're like, whoa, what? What is it? <laughs> No, so what, uh, no, one of the things that I had heard was that they're kind of what used to be called parapsychology and paranormal yeah, right. research is now is now being sort of legitimized under the rubric of uh, non locality oh, by, by physicists. Christ. Right. This is actually the same kind of shit that you'll hear Deepak Chopra, Deepak Chopra, fucking Chopra talk about, right? The non locality. Is that racist? Are we being racist right now with doing the accent? Doing his accent? Yeah. accent? I think a, it might be a bit racist. Yeah, just, just, I'm not doing it. I, I'm going to say just when for we, you guys, when mentioning we, Deepak is racist. When we quote Richard Dawkins, do we ever use his British accent? Well, we probably should. 
Yeah, you probably should. should. Let's start doing it <laughs> again so that we can nuts. cover our bases yeah, and just be do, allowed just to, to right. cover up your racism, guys. Do the other non non uh, Western accent. See, I'm not. I'm not doing the accent to be racist. I I'm doing it because he's an idiot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's did he not die? Did did he not die? Chopra? What? Did, Chopra? No. Deepak? Oh. God no. He's still... If he's dying right now. Psychic. Psychic. <laughs> He's still out there fleecing people and, uh, With and being rewarded for his bullshit. His bullshit non-locality quantum consciousness. My, my favorite bit about him is him having those diamond-covered glasses. Yeah. Oh my god! So yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Those ever... huge bands with like like, like diamond five rows Christian. of diamonds on each side. Then it reminds me of that. Uh, oh, fuck, I can't remember the cult leader guy's name from the seventies. Uh, who had so all the Rolls Royces and, and, and like a car for every every day of the Okay. Uh, you don't know who I'm talking about. I don't know specifically uh, who you're talking about. His his female representative ended up poisoning the population. There's a documentary. Oh, on the, the Wild Country yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, thing with those. Osho, oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good uh, documentary there on Netflix. Yeah. Did you watch it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, that was pretty great. So sorry, we're... Pretty crazy too that she actually fucking poisoned the town's water supply. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they had a they had a lab in some in in some like trailers yep. set up, and when the FBI raided the place, they just didn't go in those. Yep. <laughs> because somebody said they didn't have the key or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Can we inspect that sketchy the... shed over there? No, no, no. no you don't want to look at that. We key. everything else, but in that one trailer. <laughs> we'll need to inspect the trailer, man. Sorry, I lost the key. All right, then. <laughs> we'll no, forget this, about it. This Osho leader, though, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm saying, he's he was wearing these these diamond-colored spectacles as well. Or oh, something. was he? You know, yeah, okay. Not really. I'm just saying he was riding around in Rolls Royces. It was right. the equivalent. Oh, yes, kind of yes. Thing. Absolutely. It's like yeah. it, it, it points out the facade of the person oh, yeah, very it's, evidently it's, you know right. like it's how does it make sense just... <laughs> how can you have all these cars how you know how can your philosophy make any sense yeah you know yeah yeah it's completely rooted in just the pursuit of, of material reward and uh, of course it is i mean like, what, what else do you think chopra's in it for yeah, yeah like he's clearly just raking in the cash from that we did a whole episode on this i'm not going to repeat myself no, 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 that's true. <laughs> final thought on uh, stargate there jill uh, I guess um, uh, maybe my final thought is that I feel like sometimes I'm on the cusp of just wanting to just give up on <laughs> pretending to be skeptical <laughs> or looking at things intellectually and I just want to like throw my hands up and yeah okay I'm, I'm gonna start playing this app regularly and trying to well and see all my esp skills yeah, yeah. just give I, up i, I, I yeah. want you to i just want to become a believer <laughs> and say screw it and but there you wouldn't you wouldn't be you wouldn't even have to want to be a believer right just do it see what happens okay yeah see if it changes your mind okay i'll when i when i Every time I brush my teeth, I have to I have to play around of ESP. We <laughs> have you also have your wife who seems yeah. to be you know more psychic. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she the has... fact that she's more maybe she's like a psychic vampire and she's stealing all your psychic abilities. Right, yeah. right. Oh, remember when we did yeah. the Reiki thing uh, at the oh, psychic yeah. fair and she said she said that that uh, other people. Or, or somebody at work like sucks on my energy like a vampire. There you go. We've yeah. solved it. We now know why she said that. <laughs> it's your wife. Yeah. Six, six months later, we finally know the reason. <laughs> uh, psychic. 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 Psychic energy. Uh, vampire. <laughs> As for myself, my final thought is I'm open to be presented with the evidence. Like if if psychic abilities are real, I'm I'm doing this to piss you off, Luke. But well, no, you're wording it well. I'm open to the I'm open, I'm open to, to being evidence. exposed to evidence. Yeah, I'm I'm open to being presented with evidence that might suggest there's something behind this psychic thing, maybe. But until and unless I'm presented with that evidence, I have no reason to believe it. Yeah, you are not seeing any recognizable patterns. In... <laughs> no, right? No, I'm not. And that's where I'm going to end it, right now. Okay. That's it. All right. Okay, then. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Yep, 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 For real this time. This has been Critical Junction, episode 73. I'm Mark. I'm Luke. I'm Jill. As always, thanks for listening, and until next time, keep thinking critically.